now standing in the first ever Milwaukee Tool Transmit Transportation Maintenance booth at the MPS Symposium. So please give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. So those of you who've been here for the past 13 years and those of you that are new, uh, those of you might not know that this is actually the first time ever at Milwaukee Tool at this event. We're dedicating an entire section just for transportation maintenance. So this is a big deal for us. We're very excited to have all of you here. And we have some amazing new products that we're going to go ahead and walk through as well. So first and foremost, some of you might be a little uh, confused what we're saying when we say transportation maintenance. So uh, automotive is a term we've used a lot, but we didn't feel it was quite inclusive enough. We know there's a lot of users out there working on aircraft maintenance, working on heavy duty farm equipment uh, maintenance, uh, semi truck, all those sorts of um, users and mechanics out there. We weren't uh, just going after auto, we're going after that entire market. And really, We've been in this market for a while, and it, it really started with two products. So, a little history lesson, this is our 2401, and this is our 2663. High torque impact wrench, and then our M12 screwdriver. These were originally developed for our core trades, like mechanical users, doing pipe flanges, uh, people doing electrical boxes, but uh, someone on the sales team had the bright idea to say, this looks like it can take off the lugs on my car. And you know what, it, it did, and it did a great job. And ever since then, we haven't looked back. If you look up behind me, we are now the industry leaders in cordless technology in the, in the shop, and we're not stopping at all from this point forward. So what makes Milwaukee Tool different uh, compared to the rest of our competitors? Uh, I'll give a quick analogy. Who here has seen Gone in 60 Seconds, the movie? All right, so when I was younger, I saw that movie. And one car really stood out to me, uh, Eleanor. I'm sure you guys all have heard of that car, or seen that car. But the 1967 Ford Mustang GT500, that car got me going. And I know a lot of you share that same passion when you think about cars, and you're just really excited about the technology and the experience that you have when you drive a car. And that's really how we feel about the technology that we're bringing to our power tools. So when you look around you, every single one of these products is innovation packed in it that uh, most power tools haven't seen since the 1960s. And since we're talking about that, it's crazy to think that the same technology that you're using to work on a car in 1967 with pneumatic power tools is that same technology you're using today in the shop, most of you out there. So we're, we're here to say that that's going to be a thing of the past. Uh, if you haven't already converted over to a cordless Milwaukee tool, we're seeing a lot of people doing that as we speak. And we're not done right now with just the power tools you have on the market. Uh, we're developing innovation every single day that's going to deliver new power tools uh, to the market, make your users more productive, and make everyone's lives a little bit better. So, that said, um, my name is Mark Kelly. I work on our cordless fastening team here at Milwaukee Tool. I do a lot of our products here for automotive. We're going to walk through the M12 Fuels Die Grinder, which is a brand new product coming out October 1st. We're going to walk through the Extended Reach Ratchet, which is uh, uh, Zach Walsh is over here going to talk through with that. He's also going to hit on the uh, M18 Extended Anvil Control Torque Impact Wrench with one key. Uh, you can thank him for that mouthful of a name. Guys, it rolls right off the top. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, we have two products over here as well. Uh, Eric Reese is going to talk through those. It's our digital torque wrench on the M12. And then also our one inch high torque, which you all saw last year. And then finally, we're not just bringing power tools, we also have innovation in the hand tool department. Brian Dole's going to talk about that with some new uh, sockets and ratchets and steel storage. So, that said, you guys came here to see product, right? Not hear me talk. Unless you did, I can keep going. All right, so gather around here. We're going to go ahead and start off with the uh, M12 Fuel Die Grinder. So we've been, we spent a lot of times in the shops, and really, uh, when we go out, the demand has been unreal. Uh, people are using our ratchets, they're using our high torque, they're using our stubby impact wrenches, and they're asking what's next. What else can you guys bring to the market? And we saw that in pretty much every single one of these boxes, someone had a die grinder, or someone had two or three die grinders, four die grinders over here. All right. <laughs> so this is a market that right now there's no great cordless solution. There's some onesie twosies here and there uh, that are not delivering what you want and what a professional expects. So we're happy to bring the industry's first cordless die grinder that's going to deliver that power, the runtime, the size, and the control that you expect from your uh, from your power tools. So first and foremost, uh, when I went into the shop and asked people, hey, what do you want from a cordless die grinder? First thing, it needs to perform just like my pneumatic die grinder. I need that power. We're happy to say we're putting out 20% more power than a pneumatic uh, market leader on, on the marketplace. So uh, you can take my word for it. We can do a quick demo if you guys like to show that. All right. So whoever would like to come up and help, uh, whoever has a spare hand, come on up. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with this. All right, who we got here? Justin? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's give Justin a round of applause real fast. All right, so safety first, thank you. Up here we have a demo uh, that's gonna show you what the market leader is capable of versus the M12 field die grinder. So uh, when I turn the switch over here, these are both gonna turn on and we're gonna add weights to each side, see which one's able to put up through this uh, torture test. So uh, Justin, we'll, what we'll have you do here is just add a weight on top here. Just one? Yep, yeah, just one at a time. Okay. And we're gonna see how that goes. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. So as you can see, the pneumatic die grinder is already starting to bog down. And this is representative of how hard you can push on that product before it's actually going to stop. So Justin, you mind if I borrow some of your weights? Yeah, here. All right, thank you. All right. This thing is junk. This is not going too well for it, is it? No. So we can see about double the weight on here before it even shuts down, and it's finally just shut off. That's a direct representation of the power you can get from a battery pack that is that small and fits in a tight spot. Uh, yet is able to outperform your pneumatic die grinder. So um, that's going to be something that users will absolutely appreciate is you're not going to sacrifice performance. Runtime is another thing that everybody asks about. Uh, this thing's got great power, but can it have the runtime? So we did a little runtime test. We we're able to get over 20, uh, 250 linear feet of uh, gasket removal uh, on one 2 charge. So to put that into perspective, uh, we estimate that's about five transmissions uh, taking off gasket around five different transmissions with one 2-0 charge. So if you're uh, working harder than that, maybe you have a bigger surface area, we also offer 3-0, 4-0, 6-0 uh, battery packs on top of that. So got you covered on the runtime side, no problem. So big thing was uh, users were saying, uh, hey, you've, you've got speed control on the back of your tools, right? It'd be great if we could dial in the RPM. So right now, with the pneumatic die grinder, your best way to check how fast you're going is to kind of just feather the trigger, right? There's uh, you know, a little air outlet on the back, but at the end of the day, you don't really know how fast you're spinning. And each one of these accessories up here has a manufacturer rating of your max RPM that you're supposed to be operating at. You didn't know that? Well, now you know, so you can operate a little bit safer uh, out there. So we, we did a quick landscape and survey of what the most common accessories are and dialed in those RPMs around those accessories. So mode one is gonna spin at 10,000 max RPM. Mode two is gonna be at 15,000 RPM. Mode three, 20,000. And then mode four, all out RPM is 25,000. So you have 0.3 horsepower and 25,000 RPM from the right angle die grinder. Plenty of power to get the job done and also in a more controlled manner. Finally here, access and mobility. So we have some great videos of uh, us doing some prototype testing, users getting the tool, trying to find something to do, and doing one of these. Reaching for their air hose, and guess what, they don't need it anymore. And that's a, that's a great feeling for us when we go out into the shop and uh, get that type of feedback from the user how happy they are that there's no hose. But the big thing was, this needs to be compact. So front to back here, we designed it to be uh, fit into a tight spot. But the height of the product as well is also something that's going to allow you to easily store this. We know a lot of you are putting these in your tool chest. So at the end of the day, we'll go ahead and just drop her in there and you're all done and move on to the next side of the shop and uh, keep keep your day going. What's that? going to need a six pack. We're going to need a six pack. All right. <laughs> going to need Multiple. a six pack. Yeah, good. Yeah, because it sucks changing the things yeah. over. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. why I have four is to, yes. dedicated to each kind of... We're happy to have each one of you guys get at least four to six. That's yes. totally fine. <laughs> yes. We appreciate that. I'll put that as, a, as our next uh, yeah. pack to sell. Um, so all this is coming out October 1st. Uh, be on the lookout for it. There will be an inline version coming as well. So that's just going to be a little bit late fall, about uh, three months after. So January 2020. Oh, you can expect that one. Yeah, dude, that's that's well. yeah. What's the price? Absolutely. Uh, oh. Price points still yet to be determined. Uh, we've got some uh, some things in flux right now uh, outside of our control in the market that we're looking to uh, take price into consideration. But it should be right around where your stubbies or your ratchets are. Uh, to just put them all apart. So 175, give or take. Give or take. That's that's probably a good price. Uh, something around there. So, yeah. It depends if you get the six pack though, right? So, yeah. <laughs> that might be a little bit more. Why should you get a deal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Call, you. call me up. We'll get you a deal. We'll come in kit form, like. A yeah, the kit's gonna come with two batteries in there, two two O's and a charger, and then it'll also be sold as a bare tool um, as well. All right, so thank you guys for listening. We're gonna kick it over here to Zach. That's cool. Ready?
Look at that. <laughs>